Okay, I think now it's fine. Let me restart. So um, we talk about the light intensity distribution um, on the screen. And we find that in the middle, at the center, uh, we have very strong uh, light interference. Use another color. So the light intensity in the center is maximum. Then to go to the dark, so like a fringe. So the other one, we have another peak and it goes to dark then go to the peak, then go to dark. And on the other side, they are symmetrical. We have a dark and a, and a peak and the dark and the peak. So if you use a microscope to look at the, the screen or on the camera, you can also sh show the image on the computer. In this region, you will find a light stripe. So if this is a monitor, the screen, and you will see some place is uh, the light stripe and then light stripe. These light stripes are periodic, so like a fringe. So this is the uh, interference pattern. And we find that the periodicity of this fringe are equivalent. So they, are, uh, they have the equal uh, spacing. And the spacing has a relation with uh, uh, the separation of the slit, the distance from the slit to the screen, and also has a relation uh, with the wavelength, the wavelength of the light. And the relation we derived last week that will be the wavelength times the distance over the separation. That means if we change the wavelength of the light, or we change the, uh, the distance from the slit to the spring, then we will change the uh, spacing of the fringe, fringe pattern. And on the other hand, if we decrease the separation, we can also increase uh, the separation of the fringe. And in the experiment, we find that it's very easy to do this experiment. And we can adjust the, the distance from the spring to the split. And we can also uh, adjust the separation between two slits. Then we are going to measure the distance of the fringe. Then we can determine the wavelength. So most of the time, delta x, d, and l is measurable. Measurable. So we can use a measurable parameter to determine the wavelength of the light. So the wavelength is unknown most of the time. And we use the interference pattern to determine the wavelength. And usually, uh, the wavelength for the visible light. The wavelength for the with visible light. Do you know the range? It should be uh, from 300 nano to 700 nano. 700 nano. And different wavelengths have different intensity. So if this is a spectrum, and you will find that um, at longer wavelengths, the color is red. And at shorter wavelengths, the color is blue.
Okay. Then in the middle, we have yellow, we have green, and we have dark green or the blue green, something like that. And uh, here we have also the dark blue or dark red, call it purple or violet. Um, so this is a visible light and you can find that for the purple or blue and the wavelength is smaller than the color of red or yellow. And also uh, light is a member of the EM waves. That means if the wavelengths keep increasing larger than 700 nanometer, they are still EM waves, but we cannot see. So in that range, when the wavelength is larger than 700 nanometer, this is not visible, but they still have, uh, there is still uh, EM waves, we call this infrared or IR. And you can find the IR later or you have any IR detector. This is uh, some uh, facility used by military. And the same thing, if we decrease the wavelength and the wavelength is shorter than 300 nano, uh, there are EM waves, but it's still uh, not visible. Uh, this is not visible. We call this um, ultraviolet. Well, also, we have another name that's uh, UV. So most of the time, the UV light um, can damage the human skin. So. Uh, Many of the UV uh, in the sky comes from the sun and the sun can generate many UV lights and the UV light will penetrate the air, atmosphere and uh, uh, shine the ground. And if uh, you go to a very hot place like Florida or you go to the equator or you go to Singapore, the, uh, the UV light is very strong. And if you don't have any protection, your skin will burn, right? Uh, you get very hurt. So this is uh, the light and the, the color. And we have other relation that the speed of light, of light, see, equivalent to three times 10 to the eight meter per second. The speed we know this is equivalent to the wavelength of the light divided by the period of the oscillation. Is generally true, the speed equivalent to the length over time. We know the time, actually, the period is one over frequency. So we have the lambda wavelength multiplied by a frequency, the frequency of the light. So that means for the smaller wavelengths, the frequency is bigger, right? This is large frequency. And for the red, the wavelength is long, but the frequency is small. They have inverse relation. Okay. Then let's check this relation. If the light travel in the air, suppose it's a red, red light, and this light has a wavelength, Lambda, I call this lambda in the air, lambda A. And if this light travel to the water, suppose there's a water interface, air water interface, and this light penetrates the interface and enter the water, we will find the, the wavelengths shrink. So in this case, if we still measure the wavelengths in the water, the wavelength becomes smaller in the water. So that means even if they have the same color, but 
because they travel at the different media, then the wavelengths are different. And if this light uh, exits the water, suppose this is also air, and the light travel outside the water and enter the air, then we measure the wavelength. This is wavelength in the air prime. We find that the wavelength in the air prime is equivalent to the wavelength in the air. So that means the wavelength has a memory. So at the air, the wavelength is, this, is lambda a. Then when it enters the water, it shrink. Then when it gets out of the water, it go back to the original wavelength. So that means the wavelength is not determined by the color. So even if they have the same color, it doesn't guarantee they have the same wavelengths. But if we also measure the speed of the light in the air, we find that in the air, the speed of the light is three times 10 to the eight meter per second. When we measure the speed in the water, we find the speed goes down the speed drop. And when the speed when the light enters the air again, we measure the speed of the light, we find the speed of light in the air prime go back to the original speed. So that means the reason why the wavelength will change is because the speed of light change in the different media. In the different media, uh, the speed is different so the wavelengths change. But if you ch check the frequency, let's go back to check the frequency. The frequency is equivalent to the speed of light over the wavelength. We find that this ratio is a constant. So in words, the frequency doesn't change, but the wavelength will change. It depends on where the light is traveling. So the frequency determine the color of the light, not the wavelength. And you may have question why the frequency determines the color, not the wavelength. Um, if you have some knowledge of quantum mechanics, you will know the frequency has a relation with energy. If the energy conserved and doesn't change, then the frequency won't change. Um, so this is the reason why the frequency doesn't change. But you just need to remember that uh, the frequency determines the, the color and the wavelength will change. Depends on where the, the light travels. If they travel in the air, the wavelength is long. If they travel in the water, the wavelength goes uh, drop down. Okay, this is a light wavelength. Then, just now we talk about the double slit, and we find that on the screen there is a periodic pattern. The pattern looks like this, like a fringe. Now we want to increase the number of slit, like a greeting. So there are many, many holes. Each hole could be treated as uh, a light source. And we still put a screen on the back. Then you will find that we use a candle to shine the multiple slits. Each slit could be treated as a light source. Then on the screen, we see a periodic light spot. So that means in the center of the screen, we see a light spot. And on the left and on the right, on the sides, both sides, there are another light spot. And we have light spot also in the further direction 
and further and further. These light spots are periodic, sort of periodic. But if you measure the distance, uh, the distance will change a little bit. But if you just uh, look at the several spots, you can think about they are uh, roughly periodic. And you might have the question, what parameter de determine the spacing of the spot? So think about that. If we have just two slits, and the two slits uh, will generate an uh, interference pattern, we can also treat it as a periodic pattern. And when the light has difference, the light path difference, Pass difference in this region. This is a light pass difference. It's equivalent to one lambda, one wavelength, two wavelengths, three wavelengths. Then the interference will be constructive because they have the same phase. If the light pass difference is equivalent to half wavelengths or half three and a half wavelengths or one and a half wavelengths then we will get a destructive interference pattern because they have 180 degree phase difference. Um, so the same idea, if we check the spot, for example, we check this spot and we um, connect the light source to the light spot for any of the two, Slate, and we measure the light dif light path difference. The light path difference. This light path is equivalent to this light path. They equal. So the light path difference is this one. This is light path difference. Light path difference. If we want to get a constructive interference pattern, then the light path difference, delta L, we can call this one, delta L, light path difference, should be equivalent to one lambda or two lambda or any lambda times an integer. If they have this relation, we will see a constructive interference pattern. So let's calculate uh, the light path difference. So we can use mass to, to confirm this light path difference uh, only depends on the deviation angle. What's the deviation angle? Suppose I have a horizontal line. This is horizontal line. The horizontal line are uh, perpendicular to the slit and also the screen. And this spot and this the horizontal direction has angle, angle theta, right? We call this angle as a deviation angle. And the spacing between two slits is D. And from the geometry, we can get the life path difference has a relation with d and the theta. That will be equal to d times sine theta. Because you can think about that, the light path difference is the, the black line. The black line shows the light path difference. And this is equivalent to the d times sine theta, this theta. And you can confirm this theta and this theta are equivalent. This, this two theta are equivalent. So that's why we have delta L equal to D times sine theta. And you can also find that if sine theta times D is equivalent to the wavelength multiplied by an integer, we will find the light spot on the screen. So that means if we have a multiple slit and we shine light 
perpendicular to the double slit, uh, perpendicular to the multiple split slit, and we have the screen on the back, and to find where the uh, the light spot is, we can just uh, draw a horizontal line. This is a horizontal line, and from the center of the grating here, there will be a spot. Because you can think about it this way. While the slit generates a light to the center, there will be a symmetric spot, uh, slit here, generate the same light to here. And they should have the same light path. So the light path difference is zero. So at the center of the screen, there is a constructive interference pattern. Okay, we call this zero order. of interference pattern or interference spot. Okay, then we use this relation. We can find the sine theta is equivalent to the integer times wavelength over D. So at the zero order, that's because the M equivalent to zero. Then we get the theta is equal to zero. Okay, there's no surprise. Then let's see. When m equivalent to minus plus one, then we can solve the theta is equivalent to the arc sine lambda over d. Then we get a small angle. The small angle, let's see. That's from the deviation angle is theta. So theta here and they are symmetrical. The theta is equivalent to the arc sine lambda over d. So this is called the first order interference pattern. You will find a spot here. This is first order. And one is plus one, the other is minus one. So plus and the minus only uh, determines the, the direction is on the top or on the bottom. And we can keep increasing the integer to the two, then the theta will get another one as arc, cos, arc sine two multiplied by the lambda over d. Then we get another angle. Other angle is here. This is uh, second order. Is a second order interference pattern. So we can use this relation, this one, to determine where the light spot is. If we know the angle, then we will know where the light spot is. So this multiple slit has a, a, a optical name, has a physical name, we call this grating or optical grating. So the grating has many slits, many slits on the grating, and the distance between two slits, the D, is very small, and it should be within one millimeter, there are 100 slits, so maybe 10 micron. So the spacing is very small, and you can use a microscope to, uh, to watch the slit, and they're very thin, and they're very dense. Okay, so this is a greeting. And after we have a greeting, we have some simulation. I show you the simulation. Uh, I write some simulation in the MATLAB and to help you see the diffraction. Let me see the white line. Okay, so I have three color, the red, green, and blue. So the red has a longer wavelength, 660, and the green, 550, and the blue is 440. Okay. Then let's see how does the pattern look like. Look at this. We have red, we have green, and we have blue. And you can find that the spacing of the red fringe 
uh, is largest, the blue is smallest. So the spacing of the blue uh, is small, green is in the middle, and the red is long, it's very long. And if we don't use the red laser, blue laser, or green laser, we use a white light. The white light at the center, at the center you can see, uh, actually the white light is uh, a, a mixture of red, blue, and green. So in the center, the red, blue, and the green overlap. So you still see the, the white light. But after you check the first order and the, the minus first order pattern, you will find that they separate. The red light, blue light, and the green light, they separate. And the code, uh, you will find that the, the blue laser is close to the white light. The blue close, then it's green, then it's, it's red. Because the, the separation of the red is largest. So you will see the blue first, then green, then red. Blue, green, and red. So uh, that means if you have a greeting and you shine a white light uh, through the penetrate the greeting, then on the screen, you will see a rainbow. So the greeting can separate uh, the light. So this is called spectrometer. That means if you have a diamond, the diamond can uh, um, absorb some wavelengths. Then you want to check if this diamond is artificial or this is a new nature diamond. You just use a white light to shine the diamond. The, the outgoing light will lose some wavelengths, but there's still white light. Then you, if you want to check which wavelengths it loses, you use a greeting um, on the back of the diamond and the greeting will separate the light, then you will find on the rainbow spectrum, there will be some light missing. Then you compare with uh, uh, the paper and you can check that if this is a artificial diamond, if this is a nature diamond, how does spectrum look like? If they match, then you will find that, oh, this is a artificial diamond or this is a nature diamond. So this is how we uh, check uh, the diamond is fake or uh, genuine. So this is uh, uh, the greeting. Then let me go back to the last topic. Diffraction. So diffraction is called uh, is a unique phenomenon for the wave. So if there is a hole, right, this, if there's a hole and we have some particle wave or we have bullet shooting through the hole and this is a steel and block the penetration of the bullet. So if we put a target here, then only the bullet within this range can penetrate the hole and will leave on the target. Then you'll find many holes on the target. And if we check the target in this region and this region, there's no bullet because this bullet are blocked by the edge or by the wall. So um, the bullet can go through the hole and leave on the target. But if we check the bullet beyond the hole, outside of the hole, cannot penetrate. And if we count the bullet as a function of x, this is x, this is a count, how many bullets? And we will find that in the center, there's a uniform distribution, then it goes to zero. Right? zero. No bullet. And here, bullets are distributed in the hole. And the edge is very sharp. 
this is a stack function, right? Stack function, or this is a very sharp edge. The edge is very sharp. However, if we don't use Boolean, we use a wave. Same thing, we have a wall. This wall has a hole in the center, and there is a wave traveling this direction. And when the wave go to this hole, the hole could be treated as a wave source. Then this wave source will generate wave, a circular wave. And if you use a screen on the back, you will find that in the middle, this is the middle, the wave intensity is very large. No surprise. But on the edge, this is not very sharp. There are some shooter of baby waves on the both sides. So if you use a monitor to measure the, the intensity of the wave, you will find that on the shoulder, there will be a small wave, a little one, a baby one, a small wave shoulder, a little one, and a baby one. So that means if we have a distribution of the wave, this is the intensity, then we will get an intensity distribution not similar as the bullet. It should be looking like this. A very huge peak, then a small shooter and a baby wave. A small shooter and a baby shooter. Look like this. This is called diffraction. Diffraction is a unit uh, phenomenon only found in the wave. If you have particle, you have a ball, you have bullet, you never see the diffraction. Okay. And if we want to find where the, the dark region is, so there's a dark. Suppose this is a light. And on screen, you want to see where the dark is. We can also find the duration angle. This is the center, horizontal. There's the angle, right? So the angle of the sine theta um, could be derived by the math. If you're interested, you can go back to read the, the textbook. There's a derivation. I just tell you the, the, the result. That will be equivalent to the wavelength over the width of this of the hole. The width of the hole is a the width of the hole and times an integer. Integer could be equal to plus minus one, plus minus two, plus minus three, but not zero. Okay. Because if m equal to zero, that's a peak, that's a very huge peak. Then let me show you the simulation. So I have a diffraction. If I use a light to shine a hole, then we find in the center, that's a peak. Then we have a small shooter and a baby shooter. This is a light intensity distribution. And if we look at the image, what does it look like? So I have a pattern here. So first of all, uh, if we have a square hole, so the black is a wall and the white is a hole. And when the wave penetrates the hole on the screen, the pattern looks like this. We have the square hole in the center. It's a normal thing. But surround this, this hole, we have some light. So that means the edge is not sharp. And then we say it looks like a stop. And the, the distance between this fringe is around one wavelength or two wavelengths. So that's a several hundred nanometer. That's why in the reality, in the daily life, we didn't observe this phenomenon. But if you use a microscope to view the pattern of diffraction, then you will see this pattern. 
And if we have a round hole, how does the pattern look like? The diffraction pattern, if we shine light penetrates the, the round hole, we will see a hole on the screen and some ring. Right. So this is uh, very interesting. And because of the diffraction, um, the telescope and the microscope has a real uh, resolution limit. We call this diffraction limit. I tell you what's the diffraction limit. Uh, you can think about that. If we have a lens, um, both microscope and the telescope um, has a lens. You can think about this lens. So in the lens, the light can penetrate the lens and has an image on the back. So the lens could be treated as a hole. And this hole will cause diffraction. If the objective um, on all side of the telescope has two spots, there are two objective, or there are two objects. These two objects um, shine a light through the hole and on the back or on the screen, you will see two image. If the object are two point, the image is not point. The image will be a light spot with some rings because of the diffraction. And the rings is very small and the length scale of the ring is just several wavelengths. And if the wavelength of the red light is uh, 600 nano, then ideally these two spots can be separate and uh, we can distinguish these two spots and which hole represents which object. This spot is this object and this spot is this object. But if the distance of these two objects are very close, that means the D is very small. Then the two image will be very close until these rings overlap. So what will happen if these rings overlap? Let's check the diffraction, diffraction limit. So first of all, when the two spots are very far away, that's 10, suppose this is 10. Then on the on screen or on the monitor, on the camera, we will see two spots and we can distinguish uh, there are two objects. But if I keep decreasing the space, the distance of these two objects, we will find that on the screen, these two objects, these two images distort. And I keep decreasing to three, they are very close. In this case, you will see these two spots merge. But we can still distinguish there are two objects. But if I go to very close, D equal to two, then they merge and you see a, a bar. And you can not tell there they are two objects or one object. So this is a limit caused by the diffraction. That means if uh, the separation of the two objects is within one wavelength, then the objective or uh, the microscope, telescope cannot distinguish these two objects. This is called the resolution limit. And we have this relation. The, the limit um, de determines the angle of these two objects. So the object has the separation of D and the from the object to the, to the telescope is a distance of L, then we can determine the sine theta. This is a deviation angle. And there is a minimum angle. That means if the angle smaller than this limited angle, we cannot distinguish these two objects. And this angle is determined by the wavelength of the light and the, the width of the hole. The capital D is the width of the hole. So that means if the, the hole is too small, 
the object or the lens is very small, then this angle will be very large. That means if the minimum angle is large, uh, we need these two objects separate very far until we can see the image on the back. Um, so that means here, if we want to increase the resolution of the microscope or the telescope, we need to have a very large lens. We want to increase the hole. If we increase the hole, then the D become larger, then this angle becomes smaller. Then we can distinguish these two objects. Uh, usually the, our, uh, uh, our lens is just uh, several millimeter. So this is not enough. But if you go to the space, there is a very big telescope. The name is Hubble. Hubble telescope, um, the size of the lens is with several meters. So in that case, we can see uh, uh, the stars or the planet far away from, and uh, even if this angle is very small, but we can distinguish these two objects. Okay, this is called diffraction limit. Okay, I think uh, I just finished all the topic today. And do you have any question? So we talk yeah, about- Yeah, I had a question. Yeah. Um, it was, it was. I think it was on like the mastering is due tomorrow. I was just a little confused about what situation this occurred. It's like with a single slit um, like situation, mm -hmm. there's like a time where like the, it would just become like a bright light on the monitor or the, the screen or whatever. It had something to do with like the relationship between like the slit size and the wavelength size. Okay, the, there is a relation with the slit size. If the slit size is A, then on the monitor, um, the light distribution you will see is a very huge peak and then a small shoulder. And from this peak to this peak, this distance de depends on uh, the width of the A. So that means if you have very small A, then this pattern will become very large. This is a okay. action. Okay, thank you. Any other question? So when we talk about the diffraction and the interference, sometimes there is a little bit abstract. Uh, but I think if you have some image and you look some videos, and that will can help you understand the pattern and the diffraction. So I will try to slow down this uh, this topic, and we have still three weeks, so. Uh, I'm going to talk about more about the diffraction and the interference to help you understand what's going on here. And for the optics, we have another topic that's a lens. Uh, I think the lens is not difficult. Um, we can just uh, uh, do some quick practice for the lens. Then I want to talk more about the diffraction. Okay, so this is my agenda. So if you don't have a question, we will see you on Friday. Thank you. Thank you.